Good morning everyone. Today we're looking at application questions for the graphs and relations module in Further Maths. Uh, so these are questions taken straight out of the textbook. I'm going to go through and I'm going to explain uh, how to work through them and to create the answers. So first question here, the weekly wage, W dollars, of a vacuum cleaner salesperson consists of a fixed sum of $350 plus $20 for every cleaner sold. If N cleaners are sold per week, construct a rule that describes the weekly wage of the salesperson. So, the important things that we need to think about are the W, the 350, the 20, and the N. Now, the other important words in here are fixed sum. When we talk about things being a fixed sum, what does that mean in plain English? Uh, it means that it doesn't change. So fixed sum screams out to me constant. So that means that whatever equation I create is going to be, is going to have a constant at the end of it. And it's $20 for each cleaner sold. That means if I sell one cleaner, I get $20, two cleaners, $40, three cleaners, $60. So I'm going to have W dollars. And then I'm going to have 350 plus that's 20 for each cleaner. So if I have N cleaners, then my answer is gonna be 20 times N. And this is the weekly rule. So obviously because it's 20 times N, I don't need to write the time symbol in there. I can just, yeah, move it over there and make it all nice and clean. So, no matter how many cleaners I sell, I can work out how many, I can work out how much I'm gonna be paid that week. This question's a little outdated. <laughs> All right, so that's that one. Let's move on to the next one. So, a printing firm. Let me just smooch on that one. A printing firm charges $35 for printing 600 sheets of headed note paper and $47 for printing this for printing 800 instead. Find a formula assuming the relationship is linear for the charge in terms of the sheets numbers printed. So the question is what is the gradient of this scenario here? All right, because I have two pieces of information that I can represent as coordinates on a linear graph. I have the 35,600, and then I have the 47 and 800. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use these as my data points. So if I was to plot very quickly, I would have the number of sheets along the bottom, and then I would have the cost. Now, the reason why I'm doing it in that order, even though these are listed in cost per cost for the sheets, is that the question wants formula for the charge, the total charge for the for n number of sheets printed. So the x values, so the charge would go along here. So that's my y values. And then the number of sheets printed N is gonna go along the bottom here. So that means that I'm gonna be doing X values involving the N sheets. 
So I'm going to have x1, y1, and then we go x2, y2. So first things first, we need to find the gradient. So y2 minus y1, so that's going to be 47 minus 35 divided by 800 minus 600. So that's going to be 12 over 200, which is 6 over 100. So I'm going to be printing, so the relationship because we're assuming it's linear is going to have a gradient of 0 0.06 and put it this way if you haven't printed anything do you get charged anything no so the equation is just going to be equals 0 0.06 N for the sheets. And then part B says for a thousand sheets, well, if N, N equals a thousand, so C equals 0 0.06 times a thousand, so that's, and that's going to, so that's going to be $60. So 0 0.06 times a thousand. Right. A shop sells bread rolls. Five brown rolls and six white rolls costs $2.94 and three brown rolls and four white rolls cost $1.86. Find the cost of each type of roll. So this is, this is what is called a simultaneous equation problem because I have two things I don't know. I don't know how much one brown roll costs. I don't know how much one white roll costs. So I need to set up two simultaneous equations and then I'm going to use my CAS because everything can be done on the CAS to solve it. So five brown rolls. So I'm going to use the letter B to represent my brown rolls and the letters, the letter W to represent the white rolls. Five brown rolls and six white rolls. So that's five B plus six W, and I know that costs 2.94. And then the second equation is three brown rolls and four white rolls. So that's three brown, four white equals a dollar 86. Find the cost of each type of roll. So here's where we break out our CAS. So on our CAS, because this is a simultaneous equation, on keyboard, what we're looking for under math one is we are looking for the symbol that looks something like that one there. And it is under math one, it is the third column for throwdown. And when I press it, I get something like that. So I mean, so I've, got, I've got it sitting here floating above me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in my equation. So that's 5B plus 6W equals 2.94. 
and then 3B four W equals 1.86. And then I need to tell it what I'm looking for because it doesn't order, it doesn't just detect it. So I need to tell it on the outside and look for B comma W. So I'm looking for B and W. Now the answer it's spat out is in fraction form. Press that convert to decimal and it tells me that B equals 0.3 and W equals 0.24. So let's put that in context of the question. B is 0.3, so so one brown roll is 30 cents and let's move this down a little bit. And one right, one right roll is 24 cents. And the question is, and the question is answered. All right, next one down. In a test, the sum of Anne's mark and David's mark is 42. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I'm going to use A and D and then Sheila shows up for some reason. And I'm going to use S. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have A, D and S as my, as my, as my pro numerals that I'm going to use to solve this equation. So I know that Anne and David's mark, Anne plus David equals 42. It tells me that Sheila has twice as many marks as David. So S is gonna be equal to two times whatever David got. And I also know that Anne and Sheila's marks add to 42. So A plus S, oh sorry, 52. So I have three different equations to set up and I'm looking for just A, just D, and just S. All right. So again, this is a CAS question. All right, now I could sit here and do it by hand. It's not gonna accomplish much. All right, easiest thing to do is to just CAS it. Now, because this is a three-way equation, I'm going to need to hit hit the magic button twice, and it will create three rows in my system here. So I'm gonna go A plus D equals 42, S equals 2D, A plus S equals 52, and then I'm gonna go A, S, D, and then it spits out the marks. So it's telling me so it's telling me A equals thirty two, D equals ten, and S equals twenty. So up until now, a lot of this stuff should be revision from unit one and two general maths. The new thing that comes in with unit three and four is the concept of integrating financial maths and financial concepts into application tasks. Uh, question from the chat. Would it ever say to work out or to use the CAS? Look, 
as long as you can as long as you can explain what your equations are it might ask you to write out the equations but it's never it's probably never going to ask you to simply do that by hand all right you have your cas with you use your cas So the new concept or a new application of this stuff is with what's called break even points. When a business wants to sell something or they want to make something to sell, they have the costs associated with making the thing and then they have the prof or then they have the amount of money they make per thing. So it might cost me You know, it might it might cost me a certain amount of money to actually make my things, but then I sell them at a different price, and I could possibly and I could make a profit. The break even point is how much I need to sell so that my two equations are balanced. So in this case here, we have break even point when the sales revenue s is given by the rule 0.75x where x is the number of items sold the cost is given by the rules is c equals 0.25x plus 100 so what they're saying is is that you know this could be a case of you know what what costs 75 cents i mean not much anymore but whatever but they're saying, how many do I need to sell so that the so that I can cover all of the costs that I need to actually produce it? Because when you're running these sort of machines, like you know, if you're doing an assembly line or whatever, then those machines cost money to run regardless of how much you're actually making. So that would be like a constant. That would be a constant that goes on the end. So what we're looking for is the break even point. Now, if I was to quickly do a very, very rough sketch of what this might look like. So 0.75 is going to go well, it's gonna go three across, four up, three across, oh sorry, four across, three up, four across, three up. So it's gonna go up. So we'll say that's 0.75x. But this other one is 0.25. So it's gonna have a shallower gradient, but because of the plus 100, it's gonna start higher. So it's actually, so this starts at zero, but here it might start here at 100, but it's only gonna go up much slower and what we're looking for is this this point here where the two lines intersect where they intersect that is our break even point so if we get to the break even point then the sale the money that we've made covers the cost of production and then anything beyond that just becomes profit. So anything, any money that we have in here is profit. Anything in here in green is a loss. All right, what do you wanna be? You wanna be in the purple. I suppose the correct terminology is to say in the black. So the question is, how do I find that break even point? Well, guess what? You have two equations that both use X. So simultaneous equation again. So what I'm gonna do is because they're both linear equations, I'm both, I'm going to use y 
for both of my equations. So y equals 0.75x and y equals 0.25x plus 100. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the break even point. So I'm looking for x comma y and it's gonna come out here and it's gonna spit out x equals 200, y equals 150. So, a hundred, so 200 units produced is going to both cost $150, but also sell for $150. All right, so that is my, that is my balancing point. If I make 200, then I'm gonna have exactly 150. 150, so if I make 200, the cost is gonna be 150, but the sales are also gonna make 150. So what I wanna do is I obviously wanna sell more than 200. All right, so if you think about um, when people try and um, for example, make t-shirts, they have what is called a, they have a minimum order. You can't just call up a t-shirt company and say, hey, can you make me one t-shirt? They're gonna say, mm, no. Um, they would want, they would want, you know, in the order of thousands to make it worth their while so they can make their money back from actually running the machines. All right, so that was a very quick crash course through uh, the application questions from chapter 21. So that was 12, sorry, 21. Uh, e, G, and H. And I hope that helped.